the Ballon d'Or, the most prestigious individual award in football, recognizing the most valuable, talented, and influential player of a single season. However, despite its significance, it often sparks controversy, as the criteria for selection can vary significantly from a year to another. Players are sometimes favored based on statistics, other times or individual performances, and sometimes on the number of trophies won, leading many to believe that the award has lost its credibility. Some would go as far as calling it rigged, and this year's Ballon d'Or was no exception. Despite having at least three contenders, for most people, Vinny Jr. was a clear favorite. After all, he helped Real Madrid win the Champions League, La Liga, and the Super Cup, losing only two matches with Real Madrid during the voting period. He scored 26 goals and provided 11 assists, totaling a 37 contribution, which is impressive. Even if it's not the highest this season, his contributions were crucial, notably scoring in the Champions League final against Dortmund and scoring four goals against Barca in two matches, two goals versus Bayern Munich, he, without a doubt, was a game changer and he appeared when the club needed him the most. But despite such an impressive campaign, he didn't win the award, coming second to a central midfielder, Rodri. This result left many fans, especially in Madrid, frustrated and led Real Madrid players to publicly boycott the ceremony, making it seem like it was a one-sided competition person and that Vinny Jr. was the most deserving and disputed winner of this award. But is that really true? Yes, Vinny Jr. did deserve this award, but Rodri deserved it as much as he did and for reasons that may be invisible to many supporters around the world, especially those who lack the football knowledge to appreciate the work of a central midfielder. Honestly, I don't understand why is it so surprising that Rodri won this award, especially after the season he had and the consistent performance he delivered. He he won the Euro with Spain, the most important tournament after the World Cup, and was announced the player of the tournament. He won the Premier League, which is the number one league and the most competitive one, the Super Cup, the Club World Cup, winning the player of the tournament in that one as well. And he was also ranked fifth in the Premier League in the last season, with Phil Foden taking the first place. Although I believe that Rodri deserved it the most, I also believe that he didn't deserve the player of the tournament in the Euros. Definitely got lucky there. But this at least balances things out. Well, since he won the award, is he really the world's best player right now? Most would say no. Rodri isn't even considered the best player at Manchester City. The title would likely go to De Bruyne. And that is why it doesn't make any sense that he would win this award. And why people question the result in the first place. This is especially true for those who don't have a deep understanding of the game. Central midfielders like Rodri play as an important role as attack in midfielders or strikers, but their contribution can be harder to notice compared to forwards. Unlike strikers who can grab attention by scoring goals and making assists and showing off their skills with dribbles and outstanding moves, football after all is appreciated after its beauty. Scoring goals is what brings us the most joy as we watch the game, but unfortunately it's very rare for a tackle or a dual winning header to entertain us in the same way, which is why central midfielders only manage to win the Ballon d'Or once every decade. And there is a good reason why Rodri was able to win it this year. Aside from the end of the Messi and Ronaldo domination era, Rodri is an outstanding number six, and his role goes beyond winning the ball and disrupting the enemy's attack. In Man City, he is also the first player to receive the ball in order to initiate an attack. He creates tempos and spaces the same way that Busquets used to do, and takes the role of a number eight as well, which explains why he was able to bag 12 goals and 14 assists despite his position. And perhaps the most remarkable thing, he has the most accurate passes in the Premier League with a 92 pass accuracy. But I know what you're thinking, they're probably close up passes or returning the ball back. But you couldn't be more wrong because he also has the most accurate passes in the last third of the stadium. Having a good pass accuracy means at the very least that the ball does not go to the enemy opposition. Vinny in comparison, while being an extremely talented dribbler, he only had a success rate of 44%, meaning that he lost the ball 56% of the times he attempted a dribble. This also implies that he can be as harmful as he can be useful for the team, and this is especially true for the games that he played for the Brazilian team. It might be weird to compare passes to dribbles, but I thought that maybe that is their strongest suit, and I wanted to focus on the idea of winning or losing the ball. Now, 
Now, when it comes to goal contributions, Vinny Jr. obviously takes the lead. But Rodri had impressive stats as well. And his goals came in key moments. Just like Vinny, he clutched the winning goal against Sheffield. An equalizer to get a draw against Chelsea. Helped City win another Premier League title by scoring against the final days against West Ham. And lastly, the important equalizer against George for Spain. He was as influential offensively as he was defensively. And he had his clubs back the Premier League by recovering the ball back 239 times. But it's not the stats that speak up for him, but also the way he does win the ball. The way he wins the headers, the tackles, the positioning, and for how long he can keep a high pace contesting for the ball in each game. Without a doubt, he is the best at his position right now. But it doesn't stop there. He is also the most valuable player at Man City, simply because he cannot be replaced. Rodri is essential for the gameplay of Man City. If you take him out, it's a different Man City for sure. Being a central midfielder is a difficult position in itself and it is even harder to play in Man City. When Rodri was absent in three matches in Man City, they lost all three of them. He is so influential and crucial that he broke the record of the longest unbeaten streak for a player in history. With a staggering 73 matches for club and country without suffering a single loss. Guardiola said it himself and he isn't wrong. Even De Bruyne can be replaced by the likes of Fernando Silva or Foden. Even Haaland can be replaced by Alvarez. And don't get me wrong though. Vinny Jr. can be very hard to replace in Real Madrid too. But he isn't as essential for their style as Rodri is to Man City. And I believe that Vinny was the best player in the world at least in the second half of the season. For club at least. Well the first half of the season goes for Jude Billingham. But wait, how come Rodri won it then? If he's not the best in the first or the second half. That's because he undoubtedly was the most consistent for the entire season. Not only that, but for both club and country. Billingham performed very well for his country too, leading his nation to the final and saving them in the last minute. But unfortunately, he did not win the title, nor was he the best player of any of the tournaments. Thankfully though, Rodri's contributions didn't go unnoticed. And that's because the Ballon d'Or is given based on votes from 100 national journalists worldwide, each representing one of the top 100 countries in the football ranking, which not only makes them very knowledgeable and aware of football and current events, but also makes it harder to control the narrative of the award, as it is much harder to influence the votes of a hundred journalists in a hundred different countries, giving the award its credibility. And now, speaking of tournaments, what I truly believe to have hurt Vinny Jr.'s chances to win the award was his performance for the Brazilian team. Because let's be real guys, national performances do matter. In fact, most of the time they matter more than club performances. That's why R9, Nedvid, Modric and Messi won the award overshadowing other incredible performances like Haaland in 2023, Cristiano Ronaldo 2018 and Lewandowski in 2021. And Vinny Jr. was at the very least disappointing in both Copa America and World Cup qualifiers and a weak performance overall. He also hurted his national team by receiving an unnecessary yellow card that disallowed him for participating in the round of 16 where his team got eliminated. Despite playing for a country as big as Brazil, he failed to contribute to his nation, disappearing completely in some of the matches. The difference between his performance at Real Madrid and Brazil is so huge that it makes him almost irrecognizable. And this, if continues, might even lead Brazil to be disqualified from the World Cup for the first time in decades, which is why he lost many of the Latin American votes for himself. But I get it, this is not the Brazil we used to know, and Neymar isn't present either. But even so, in people's eyes, it is still Brazil, and it's still bagged with support stars after all. And while it's not entirely Vinny Jr's fault, it still has impacted his chances to win this award. And since it was played after the Champions League and was the last tournament we saw Vinny play, this rules for Rodri's favor as well. We saw Rodri perform very well at the Euros, saving his team with a decisive goal and eventually lifting the trophy for his nation. And this was both bad and good for Billingham since he was at the peak of his performance at the beginning of the season, which most gets forgotten quite easily, but also performed well for England at the Euros, which significantly increases his chances. Usually the award ceremony is only a few months after the national tournaments, which makes them a huge factor to winning the Ballon d'Or award. Not only that, but since each the representatives of each nation who's voting, that means they would have a close eye on your performance while you play for your nation. But even though this is a big hit for Vinnie Jr., it is still not the biggest reason he lost. It is important to
interesting to know that the votes for the winner are spread across three key periods since 4 September. About 45 to 50 percent of the votes take place within the final 10 days leading up to the deadline. And journalists do this likely to account for any major matches or player performances during this period. This still didn't rule in his favor. The biggest reason would probably be his performance for Brazil. Not only that, but the last big match that was shown before the award was given was El Clasico. As he failed to contribute in that match and proved entirely ineffective, failing to dribble past defenders or failing to perform moves and fall into the outside trap. He surely didn't appear as strong as a Ballon d'Or winner. This isn't fair of course because you can't judge a season's award based on a single match. But the thing is, the last thing you see before you vote can strongly impact your decision. It wouldn't be a surprise that he lost some of the votes at the very least. In the end, this award is a popularity contest and the voters are still humans after all. You can love someone for his incredible performance, but you can also hate someone with a bad behavior. And if the last things you see are both a bad behavior and a bad performance, then most likely it is not gonna be good for you. Despite being incredibly talented on the ball, his on-field attitude overshadows his skills. He used to constantly tease the fans of the opposite team, other players, or coaches, and repeatedly argued with the referee, which resulted in him being a subject of racism, which of course cannot be justified, but when you constantly prompt it and play the victim card every single time, and going as far as calling the whole nation of Spain a racist nation, you not only have lost Spain's votes, but a lot of votes around the world too. With all of this drama surrounding him and the way he behaves, it is hard to take a liking of him or respect him. Meanwhile, Rodri displayed consistent excellence and humility, leading his team to victory and not suffering any loss without resolving to any act of unsportsmanship. Okay, so if Rodri deserves to win for his national performance, then why can't Carvajal win it? It's hard enough for a central midfielder to beat an attacker, and it's even harder for a defender. There already was a hard competition between three talented players. Despite being the player with the most titles and having a great performance, he still failed to capture enough attention. That is due to his position and possibly also because of his character as a defender. As usually, whenever a defender has a strong chance of winning the Ballon d'Or, it is always that strong and vicious kind of defender. If anyone would pick a defender, it is likely for his performance plus his character as well. If anything at all, he actually hurts the chances of Vinny to win. The biggest reason why Vinny didn't win in the first place is that he ran into the same problem as Iniesta and Xavi, with not only two, but three players of the same club running for the award, reducing his chances even more. Just like we all believe that Iniesta deserved it in 2010, having Xavi performing decently as well surely took away some of the votes. If Vinny had a more convincing performance with Brazil and shown more sportsmanship, he would without a doubt have won this award. Not showing up for the ceremony is a further proof of his lack of character. It's childish on his part and he dragged the entire club with him, which is undoubtedly questionable and would hurt the chances of every Real Madrid player to win this award or any award in the near future. I truly hope that this does not start a streak of clubs and club players not being present at the award ceremony because if the Ballon d'Or was never rigged before, this will undoubtedly increase its chances of getting rigged, making the results in the upcoming future more biased and more unfair than it ever was. Thank you for watching.